Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I pray that everybody is having a good Monday night so far. Felt led to come on here and just talk a little bit. Yeah, I've had some time to reflect on things as I've been recovering from my surgery. And thank you all for the prayers, by the way. Uh, your prayers were heard, as always. God always hears our prayers, even if we don't get immediate answers. He always hears them. And boy, were those prayers effective. Uh, when I got the surgery right right before I went in, one of the things that the specialists told me is that it could take anywhere from two to three weeks before I would start to truly feel like normal again. And I am pleased to report that as it stands right now, the 20th, it would be five days post-surgery because I had the surgery on the morning of the 15th. I feel pretty much 98%. I, I still have some slight pains, but it's not like it was before, like right after I got out of the surgery. So all in all, I'm glad I had the procedure done. I, it needed to be taken care of, right? I mean, it, sure, it was something I could have waited on, but I wasn't going to wait and then run the risk of it becoming a bigger issue later. So I'm glad I went in, glad I got the procedure, got it all taken care of. Glory to God, I am on the mend, and I'm feeling as close to 100% as I have felt since the surgery. And it's only been five days. So I mean, I would say that's pretty darn good. So thank you all for the prayers. Hopefully you all can hear me fine. I'm having to talk a little bit quieter with it being 11.15 at night. But I just wanted to come on here and kind of give that little praise report of the fact that the surgery went well, I've been recovering fine, and thank you all for the prayers. But there was another reason why I wanted to come on here. It's because I've had time to reflect. I've had a lot of time to reflect these past five to six days just on everything going on around us, right? Everything going on in the world today. And, you know, we're seeing a rise in all of the various disasters that the Bible foretold that we would see in the last days. You've got earthquakes, pestilences, uh, you have nations rising against nations, you have wars and rumors of wars, uh, you're seeing precursors of the one world beast system all around us. But there's one thing in particular that has been weighing very heavily on my mind and on my heart, and it's something that has grieved me quite a lot is the continuous rise of Lordship Salvation. I'm still seeing it, left and right. And I know what you're thinking. You shouldn't be surprised, right? Lordship Salvation has been on the rise for decades, you know, but especially seemingly over the last 25 to 30 years. So you shouldn't be surprised, especially as we're in the midst of this revolutionary digital era, that we would continue to see the rise of Lordship Salvation, but it has still grieved me. It has still surprised me a little bit just how many folks are coming out of the woodworks on all the various social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, constantly preaching and teaching this hogwash known as Lordship Salvation. They don't believe it's enough to just trust in the gospel of Christ. They don't believe it's enough to just have faith in what Jesus did for us on that cross at Calvary almost 2,000 years ago, paying our sin debt once and for all, past, present, and future, to tell us die, it is finished. They don't believe in that. They believe that you have to show that you're a Christian. You have to live a certain way. You have to be water baptized. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life, as if he isn't Lord of your life already. He's technically the Lord of all of our lives. It's just those of us who are saved are the ones who chose to believe in his finished work. The finished work of the gospel alone. But you continuously have these lordship types coming out saying that, oh, well, you know, it's not enough to just believe the gospel. You know, you have to speak in tongues as well. You have to get water baptized. You have to follow the Ten Commandments. You have to apologize and confess and repent for every sin you do. Of course, they're misinterpreting and misunderstanding what the word repent actually means. Repentance is a change of mind, change of heart, from unbelief to belief. Right? To repent does not mean to confess or apologize for sin. 
Repentance means to change your mind. In other words, when you were once a non-believer, but you're now a believer, you have automatically changed your mind and therefore your heart because the mind and the heart are one. You see what I'm saying? So when you believe the gospel and you officially go as a result at that instantaneous moment from non-believer to believer, you have automatically repented. Repentance and salvation. Again, two sides of the same coin. Repentance and faith go hand in hand. That's all that's required is faith. That's why it saddens me how I'm continuously seeing these lordship types who want to just absolutely do away with the blood. It's like they don't care about the blood of Christ. They just want to great value it. They want to say that the blood wasn't enough. That it's your performance too. That's not true. That is not true. And it's really starting to frustrate me a lot. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys should see some of the comments I have to read on a daily basis. I mean, it, it, seriously, sometimes I wonder how I don't just start snapping. Of course, I know how. Because of Christ in me. I have that certain peace that, you know what, things are the way they are. You can't change really how others think or how others view things or the things that people say. You can't change it. All you can do is ensure that you're teaching the truth in a way where others could hear that truth and perhaps be set free from the bounds of legalism. But some of the comments I have to read on a daily basis, it's just astounding, of people who don't believe that the blood was enough that they believe it's something you have to do too. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life, right? That's what they say. Well, that's wrong. That is wrong. Jesus paid our sin debt in full once and for all. It was a complete sacrifice for the remission of sin. He was buried and he rose again to complete that payment. That Act alone, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ served as the propitiation for all mankind's sins, all mankind's wicked wrongdoings. Jesus paid the debt. But if you listen to these lordship types, they'll say, oh, well, you know, he didn't really pay it. That's basically what they're saying, right? They'll never come out and say exactly that. You know, they'll say, oh, you know, Jesus has finished work on the cross. He, he did the work, but you got to make sure you're holding up your end of the bargain. Well, what they're really saying, I'll give you the translation of that, is that what Jesus did wasn't enough. He didn't really pay your sin debt. He paid 80% of it. You have to pick up the remaining 20%. That's not how it works. Jesus paid our sin debt once and for all, past, present, and future, by his death, burial, and resurrection. That complete once and for all sacrifice paid our sin debt in full. It wasn't a partial payment. And it certainly wasn't a conditional payment as far as having to do works. The only thing you have to do to accept that payment is to believe, to have faith, to have trust in the finished work of Christ alone. If you're relying on what these lordshippers tell you, right? If you're relying partially or fully on your own works to get to heaven, you're not going to get there. It's not going to happen for you. But there's hope. And that hope is the gospel of Christ. Jesus did the work. He did it all. 100% Christ, 0% additives. And there's hope for you. All you have to do to become born again, to become saved, to become a believer, is to trust in that work that Jesus did for you almost 2,000 years ago on the cross at Calvary. Just believe in the finished work. That is all that is needed. Salvation is not difficult. It's astonishing how these lordshipper types, oh, you know, it's just, it's just a bunch of greasy grace. Well, I'm sorry. I, I believe in a God that actually loves us. I believe in a God that's made salvation easy. That all we have to do is believe. Is that so bad? Is it bad to actually believe in what the Bible says? 
instead of just cherry-picking a bunch of verses that make you sound self-righteous and important? I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was a bad thing to actually believe in what the Bible teaches. Grace alone is what saves. Not grace plus whatever you do. Not grace plus your self-righteous personality traits, your ability to obey commandments and follow the, all the Jewish laws and ordinances. Grace alone is what saves. Period. So you're watching this video right now. Do not listen to the legalistic folk. Do not listen to the Lord shippers who say, oh, it's just easy believism. Well, the gospel's pretty easy. <laughs> so I, I don't know why you're throwing around easy believism as if that's an insult. When I hear that, I take it as a compliment. Because yes, it is easy to believe. The gospel's pretty simple. The gospel is simple. It's not complicated. Salvation is not some difficult... Uh, over-the-top, compl complicated, difficult-to-understand 12-step process or program. Or, it's not something that you have to work towards. Just believe, man. That's it. I don't understand what's so hard to understand about that. I know, I'm in rare form tonight, but these, these people have just riled me up, man. It's like they, they like to disrespect our Savior, because that's what it is, right? To say that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough and that you have to do some works too, you have to hold up your end of the bargain, that is disrespectful. And quite frankly, they're spitting in the face of our Savior when they say that. It's not hard to be saved. Just believe. That is all you have to do. Believe in what? Believe in the gospel. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Esword which is my online digital Bible program, and we are going to get into the verses pertaining to salvation and the gospel of Christ. Because all you have to do is believe in that. To place your trust solely in that to save you. The gospel, the good news, that's what the word gospel means. It literally means good news, the good news of our salvation, that Jesus made a way for us to be saved. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, and it reads like this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel right there. That is the finished work that Jesus did for us on that cross at Calvary almost 2,000 years ago, paying our sin debt in full. And all we have to do to be saved is accept that payment. And it's by faith alone that we actually accept that payment. It's not 50% faith and 50% works. It's 100% faith. 0% works. That's why I always say it's 100% Christ, 0% additives. That's what I'm meaning when I say that. Just trusting solely in this finished work known as the gospel of Jesus Christ alone. That is how you become a believer. That is how you are saved at that exact moment and sealed with the Holy Spirit, proving the doctrine of eternal security to be the absolute truth. Just trust in that gospel. I'm going to go ahead and read John 3. And you know what? I'm actually going to start with verse 14. So normally I just read verses 16 to 18, but I'm feeling led to actually start with John 3, verse 14, and read all the way down to 18. So I'm going to read this now. It ties in beautifully with the gospel that I just read to you all in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. So I'm going to read this. It's John 3, verse 14 through 18. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Are you noticing a theme here? Are you noticing the pattern? The only prerequisite to salvation is faith, believing, right? It says, whosoever believeth in him. It does not say whosoever does good works for him. It does not say whosoever obeys him. It does not say whosoever makes him the Lord of their life. It's not what it says. It says, whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, the finished work of the gospel, should not perish but have everlasting life. What does the word everlasting mean? It means forever. It means a life you can't lose. If you could lose your salvation, it wouldn't be eternal, would it? Wouldn't be everlasting if you could lose it. And as you're going to see now, salvation, and it's pretty obvious at this point, but the scriptures make sure to make it abundantly clear that salvation is not something you have to work towards. It's not something you have to do a bunch of steps in order to obtain. Salvation's a free gift. And we obtain that gift by faith. I'm going to go ahead and close out here with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, which says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm going to read it again, because I think it's important, especially for this particular video. I'm feeling led to read it a second time. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace, by definition, is getting what we don't deserve, God's unmerited favor, which he has offered to us as the free gift of salvation, with emphasis being placed on the free gift portion of that phrase. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, then, now, and forever, by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. It's not of ourselves. It's not of our o obedience or our performance or willingness to do good works and obey the law. It's not of ourselves so that no man may boast. Salvation is the gift of God. So I pray that those of you watching this video right now who maybe are still in a state of unbelief, right? You're still walking around as non-believers. I pray that you would make the decision of decisions right now. And that is to trust solely in the gospel alone and be saved as a result. And sealed with that Holy Spirit that you can never lose. I pray that you would believe on Christ alone now while you have the opportunity to do so. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. As we know all too well nowadays... All right, life is but a vapor. We're here one moment, gone the next. You, you have no idea when your exact expiration date's going to be. You have no clue if you're going to be here a week from now. That's why it is imperative that you trust in the gospel alone while you have the chance. This way you know that that nanosecond that you believed the gospel of Christ alone for your salvation, that you became a child of God, an heir of God, and a co-heir of with Christ Jesus at that exact moment of belief. You're saved and sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. It's a paraphrase of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just I pray that you believe the gospel. That's my main message here. That is the key takeaway that I want you all to leave watching this video with. Just believe the gospel. Jesus did all the work. He made salvation very easy. Just believe. Grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone is what saves. Always has been. Always will be. Christ did all the work. Just believe he did that for you. Believe he paid your sin debt forever. That is where I'm going to leave this video. I pray that you believe the gospel if you haven't because tomorrow's not promised. So you should probably make that choice today if you're so led. This is where I'm going to leave it. 
I will see you all in the next video, should the Lord tarry his coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. Take care, guys. Good night.